powerful. How is femininity powerful? Where do tomboys fit into all of this? Because I hear this all the time too. Well, I'm a tomboy, so I'm never going to be feminine. Can you clear all that up? Let's talk about appearance. How does that relate to femininity? Can we just clear it up right now that femininity has nothing to do, almost nothing, maybe not nothing, but almost nothing to do with the activity or task that you're doing. Can we just say that? But the problem is we live in a culture now, we're trying to bring this back where women don't understand it. And so they don't see as many examples around them necessarily of this feminine influence and power, but it's definitely there. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Fascinating Womanhood channel. On our channel, we talk about everything that has to do with developing femininity and building strong, long-lasting, loving relationships. I'm Cherry Lynn, and I'm here with my mom, Dixie Andalyn Forsythe. Hi. Hi. So we are here today to talk about a very, very popular subject, and we're calling it What is Femininity? We've been hearing so much lately about the topic of what is a woman. I'm sure a lot of you have been hearing about that. You can't really open up a thread or a news article without seeing something about this debate about what is a woman. And it's not surprising to find this because it is a very heated debate in society today. But what's so surprising about this topic is that there are a lot of people that still are unable to answer it. We could go on and on about what is a woman, but we feel like that's been covered so much. And we wanted to talk more about what is femininity. We want to not only address and answer this question, but discuss why it's so misunderstood and why it's so important to understand the true meaning of what femininity is. Right. So what we first need to talk about is what is the true meaning of femininity in the first place? The dictionary says, uh, one dictionary anyway, the quality of being feminine or womanliness or qualities or attributes regarding as characteristic of women, which is kind of vague. And and then the the suggestion they had, the the sample is she alternated between embracing her femininity and and concealing it, which also isn't very specific, but we didn't used to have to be specific. So that yeah. that's fine. That's, but the Urban Dictionary says individual individual characteristic of being, practicing, and appearing feminine. Now, I have a little bit of an issue with that because anything could appear feminine, and that doesn't necessarily make them feminine, feminine because we are women and we have natural characteristics Uh, that are latent in us, whether we've developed them or not, that are feminine. It's just like getting in touch with things, you know, from the time you're a child, you get in touch with things with you and that brings out your femininity. So I think it's important to talk about what is out there. And that, that I think starts out the conversation so well. Well, no wonder everyone's confused. We don't really talk about this and there aren't a lot of resources that are accurate and to the point and specific. So now we want to talk about not only some stereotypes for femininity, because this is actually quite fun as we started to dig in and and look into this and talk about this as a group. But we also want to talk about the feminist views of femininity. So you've got stereotypes and we've got the feminist views of femininity. So number one stereotype that femininity makes you dumb. Because there's so many, well, there's Hollywood again, so many stereotypes that came from Hollywood did this even like Marilyn Monroe she got really tired of being typecast as a dumb blonde and she was very feminine yeah Uh, but there's others like legally blonde she plays it kind of a dumb blonde but a smart blonde too she dumps her way into winning that case but it's still this kind of the stereotype I think with the yeah there's the Jane Mansfield that it's all about this tricking society and especially women into thinking that if you are a feminine woman and perhaps you just happen to be really beautiful, you have to be dumb because otherwise it's not possible. It doesn't exist. And I think that's, that's a really annoying stereotype, but it's also a very popular one because we like to laugh at them and it's fun. And in the movies, we like, we, we enjoy this kind of entertainment being served to us on a platter of, oh, she's feminine and cute and dumb. And I don't want to be like that. You know, you were teaching these girls that I don't want to be like that, but she sure is funny. Right. And it's not true. It's all a, it's all a lie. The second one is that femininity means you're a bimbo, which is a little bit different. Similar to the first one, but a little different. What does that mean? Well, means you're sexy and dumb. Instead of the mahi mahi, may I just get the one mahi because I'm not that hungry? (laughs) (laughs) There's the James Bond women who... 
Yeah, there's a ton of those because there's been a ton of James Bond films. Pamela Anderson and Margaret. And these tend to be women who kind of are portrayed, again, this is Hollywood, portrayed as slaves to men and they can't really be their own person. And a, a mature woman resents that. They don't want that. Yeah, it's like this the the femininity stereotype here that she's sleazy and she has no morals. And that's what femininity is. And I don't want to be associated with those women because they use sex to get what they want. And of course, all these women actually do exist. But what we're trying to discuss here is that it would relate to the meaning of femininity. And it's just not accurate. No, it's not. And then the third stereotype is that femininity means that you're a fragile flower. I think what's infuriating about the fragile flower is that we women that believe femininity is about being a fragile flower insinuates that feminine women are lazy, which is really infuriating. And of course there are there again, all of these women actually do exist in these stereotypes, but again, we're talking about the, the majority and the, the true, true definition of femininity. And I think of when I think of the fragile flower, I think of, I, of course I love snow white, but she's mm-hmm. kind of like that fragile femininity ambassador that's like oh you know she can't really handle a lot because she is really fragile but she was a child so it doesn't really make any sense to kind of like lump a woman like that into the true definition of femininity you've also got um enchanted that movie enchanted where just to use you know visual examples you've got um that character in, in that movie where she just can't handle anything and she can't she can't handle criticism she can't handle people crying you know that's just ridiculous. It's not what femininity is. And I think this gives femininity a bad name when you're talking about these three stereotypes. Yeah. And the Snow White one, to be fair, was um, four children, little girls, and little girls aren't really sophisticated, and, but they're not adult women. You might be a little angelic by nature or, or, a, or a little bit perhaps fragile does not necessarily make you a weak woman. And oh. we're going to talk a bit about that in a minute, but those are the three most common stereotypes. Now let's go into the feminist views of femininity. The first one is that femininity looks, it should at least by the feminist point of view, look like girl power. Which is like the Spice Girls, Catwoman, who wears stiletto heels and kicks everybody around and other characters. And they always look sexy in those parts. Uh, But the reality of a woman actually doing that is complete fantasy. This is the problem with femininity equals girl power is that it, it's more, more than likely built on a foundation of complete falsehood. There's no way that some of these women in these superhero shows and things like you said, Catwoman, there's no way they could actually do all those things and beat up a man like that. But it sure sounds good. So this motto of like, we can kick butt and heels is just not at all anywhere close to what true femininity is. No, and it's not what it's not what true feminine power is either. So it's it's double doubly isn't true. And then the uh, other one is that is kind of like the first one, but it's that femininity means doing the impossible. So it's about women literally being able to do the exact same things as men. In fact, probably better than men, and yeah. flipping their hair at the same time. <laughs> Even if, they, even if they don't, like in Star Wars, even if they don't practice to become a Jedi, they can beat a Jedi master. It's just not a thing. It just is ridiculous. And I know we're using movies and that's not necessarily like everyday, you know, relatable real life, but it's a visual for everyone to kind of understand the key points that we're getting to without having to spend, you know, hours and hours on these subjects with real life people and real life stories. So now we're going to move into the two basic parts that equal femininity. Now in Dixie's book, if you haven't read Dixie's book, Fascinating Woman of Womanhood for the Timeless Woman, in that book, she talks about all of this. So if you really want an in-depth study of this, you have to read her book. But we are just going to touch on this topic today because it is a really powerful message that goes into today's video. We're going to go into the two main parts of femininity. They're broken into two. So what's the first one? First one is physical, and that includes the way we move our ability to bear children or to potentially bear children and feeding children, our vulnerability, our natural vulnerability that we have by being women. Okay, And the second one is mentally. Now, mentally includes 
our interest in relationships, women, men are interested in relationships too, but not usually first like women. It becomes kind of a kind of a thread that that in talks about all the, the main things that are important to us. So when we when we deal with any issue, women usually, good women anyway, consider the relationship involved in any transaction. So our, our relationships, our sensitivity to other people, to things, and also about our capacity to love, which is also informed by those things above it, our interest in relationships. Women will often sacrifice a great deal for a relationship or in our sensitivity to others to not hurt them. So are you saying with the, both of these physical and mental parts, are you saying that some of these things can be a part of some of the stereotypes? Like some of the stereotypes can kind of fall into the femininity true parts. It's just that it goes deeper or are they just completely unrelated? Well, the, the thing, the girl power thing is just not accurate. It's not accurate at all. Most women, if you, if you deal with somebody like a man who's approximately your same size and age, they're going to be 75% stronger unless you work out and they've been sickly and in the hospital for a long time. It's just not reasonable. And stuff like some of it is involving with immaturity, the, like the bimbo thing the and all that's immaturity and lack of character. The woman who's just the, the Gabon girl who just sleeps with anyone who's sexy is, uh, is not typical of, of what, a feminine woman really wants out of her life. I mean, is she going to do that when she's 65? I don't think so. I'm really glad you bring up the maturity level thing, because I think that some of those points that you just said about physical and mental, most of those women that are bimbos probably have those, but they're just so immature and they've had such, perhaps they have had a bit of a life, a, a difficult life yeah. that has wounded them. And it's, it's caused a series of steps that has brought them to the place that they are. And so that mm -hmm. confusion of this, feminine woman, it, it gets lost in the maturity levels and the choices that they're making. Yeah, it's not, I mean, their looks is not masculine. If you divide everything between masculine and feminine, they can look feminine, but it's not really femininity. Right. So. Yeah, that makes sense. So now are you, what about when we talk about physical and mental, this is the femininity kind of like pillar is that woman strong? Because it doesn't say in there anything about strength. Uh, it takes a great deal of emotional as well as physical strength to raise children, to do a lot of things. We to have courage takes a great deal of, of a mental strength to do what we need to do, to take care of relationships, to be humble. All those things require a great deal of strength. I don't know why today people act like the only strength we're talking about is physical strength. That's only one thing of all the strengths there are. Well, I'm surprised that feminists don't recognize this a little bit more, especially the feminists out there that are mothers and realize, wow, you know, all the things that I've done to raise my kids and to bring them into this world, that's pretty amazing. Why are we still trying to compete with men physically when we can do all those things? It's, it's, it's our own. It's our own strength that we have that we should be proud of and we shouldn't be insecure with our strength because that's I mean I don't know about you but getting up in the middle of the night and nursing babies and all that stuff like that is really really difficult and there's a reason why we were chosen to do it women have such great love and capacity for love and for relationships it's a great strength right and I'm glad you you mentioned that just women in general because even if you're not a mother if you're not planning to have children you can't have children you still have this capacity in you right. I've had teachers in my life that have been women that have been this way um, and I'm sure you probably have too and I've I've associated with teachers even presently with my children that are this way and they they continue to amaze me and I'm not saying that men don't have a capacity to love but we just have our own capacity to love. And it's so much, it's so different from men's. And I think that's where my mind goes when I think of the true definition of femininity. Women have a lot of strength and strength of character. And that's kind of what we focus on in, in helping women to, to get in touch with and mature their own femininity. Yes. And not only do we 
care about the relationship. We actually can do a task while caring about a relationship and we're a lot better at it. We can get the job done while we're thinking about everyone around us. And that's kind of amazing. I think we can really do it all. And, and we, but we don't need to put on this facade that we have to do it all, including everything that men do. That's the problem. It's not fair to women to put that on ourselves. Now that we've talked about the physical and mental, which are the two larger portions of what we wanted to talk about, let's talk about appearance. How does that relate to femininity? Well, it's an expression of how we feel on the inside. And when you're when you're dressed feminine, and that doesn't mean lace and ruffles all the time, women have different styles. Basically, what we say is feminine dress is anything that that kind of contrasts the way a man would usually dress. Your husband probably wouldn't want to wear, whether it's colors or styles or things like that. The way you dress enhances and basically tells the world, I feel feminine. I am a feminine woman. I think this is really misunderstood. And this is a big problem, especially in the women that are really pro-feminine and really traditional these days. And they're in our forums and they're talking to us and all they want to develop is their appearance. And I think it's great that women want to work on their appearance. Appearance is really important, but we forget how the roots of what's going on and it's the physical and the mental and I think you know it's just so 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 important to start there versus just work on your appearance and maybe maybe some women think that they don't really need to work as much on the inside (laughs) but I think it's just so important to realize that it's it's almost like you think about a cake with like the icing on top like the the appearance is the icing and without the cake you just have icing (laughs) and you really need both have this yeah, delicious dessert. You don't want to eat cake that is just looks good but isn't actually good. You know? Right. <laughs> so, right. So, yeah, and, and the way you look is is important, but it's not the most important. But you can't just say, well then who cares about the way I look? Because right. it affects how you feel inside too. Yeah. And I think there's just too much emphasis on femininity being, as you mentioned earlier, ruffles, bows, and flowers. And that's just not, this is why women, women that are feminine tend to maybe get a bad name for themselves is because you are only paying attention to that outside and you're not maybe the L woods and legally blonde, that whole example, she was kind of not really paying attention to who she was inside. I know it's kind of a cheesy silly yeah. comedy but to just have a visual for you there it's it makes sense like she was kind of dumb because she really all she cared about was the history of polka dots like she really <laughs> didn't oh, really okay. care yeah. about those things inside until the end and then she did and then it ended up being silly but i think you know there there are women out there that do just care about the appearance part and you're going to get to a point in your life where you realize you need to dig deeper right i agree where do tomboys fit into all of this? Because I hear this all the time too. Well, I'm a tomboy, so I'm never going to be feminine. Can you clear all that up? I, I guess uh, you'd have to define tomboy. The most I usually hear it defined as somebody who likes outdoors and things that traditionally boys like to do, like climbing trees. That isn't necessarily a boy thing. Like if you never liked playing with dolls and you like going out and riding horses, I don't see that as being boyish. Maybe I think it may be our, our culture stereotype, but some girls, not all, but some girls, their father really wanted a boy and they wanted to please him. So they tried to do more things their father liked to do or something, but they're still a girl and a woman. And it doesn't mean that if you like dressing like that, I mean, I've seen quote, cowgirls that are very feminine, wearing jeans and, and boots and hats and, and the whole thing. You can do those kind of things and still be very feminine. Can we just clear it up right now that femininity has nothing to do, almost nothing, maybe not nothing, but almost nothing to do with the activity or task that you're doing. Can we just say that out, like shout it from the mountains? <laughs> it is how you are approaching that activity and that task that is feminine. Inside, like if you're a nurse and you have to wear nurse's clothes at the hospital and say, let's say they're surgical scrubs and they, they're the same for for men and women you can still be decidedly feminine and dress like that for work. Or if you're in the military or, or any of those things where you have to wear an outfit. It all goes back to the physical and the mental two categories you talked about earlier is how you treat people, how you carry yourself and where your heart lies. And that's wh- where the true femininity is. And if you want to 
you know, add earrings, again, the icing, if you want to make yourself more feminine on the outside, that's great, but you don't have to. And I hope the women out there that identify with this category of tomboy realize that all this time, you really are feminine in there. You just yeah. maybe don't love all of the icing stuff that all the other girls like, and that's okay. Very well put. I like it, the, the icing. And because it's also the way you move. It doesn't matter what you're wearing. You can move like a woman. I got to tell you, my son plays soccer. And every time I go to his games, I see the girls playing soccer over here. And you can see these girls wearing the exact same uniforms that the boys are wearing. And some of them, it's, it's incredible the way that they move and they treat each other. Uh, some of them, not so much, but most of them are running more delicately and more they do they really do and they're still great players they're amazing players they're athletes but they play differently and i think that's what a lot of us are missing here <laughs> and, and the way again the way they treat the other players is is just different i'm not saying it's better than the boys i'm not saying the boys are mean but it's just different and that's femininity what what you're seeing and Look for it next time you go to an event where it may not seem that feminine of, a, of an event to you and a sporting event or events where it may not feel like the most female kind of place to be and notice that the females are doing, they're doing it a little differently. And that's femininity. It's in those tiny little things. What do you think about as far as femininity being powerful? How do you see femininity as powerful when we've used all these words to describe it as, you know, being mothers and being loving? Like that doesn't necessarily sound really powerful. How is femininity powerful to you? It's powerful distinctly in its influence. Its influence is, can last way longer than what we traditionally think of as masculine power, which is talking somebody into it, persuasion, money, force, all that kind of stuff. When women understand femininity and their power, you see it all around you in history. We just don't connect it as being, you know, this is femininity, but it is. I know it's a, it's a fic fictional story, but Helen of Troy, how these two countries fought each other because of the, because over this one woman and things like that happen in real life. Mm -hmm. And, and, and and not even not just with famous people. Most often, not with famous people. People become well known, legendary in their own families because of the way they are, for good or bad. But of course, here we want it all to be for good. It can be incredibly powerful. But the problem is, we live in a culture now. We're trying to bring this back where women don't understand it, and so they don't see as many examples around them necessarily of this feminine influence and power but it's definitely there well and and the most furious thing that i think is going on is that they think that you can just be a woman no matter what you were born biologically because it's just a something you wear it's, it's not clothes that. that you put on and it's mannerisms and that's that's not what femininity is. That's not what we're, we're talking about today. We're talking about who you are deep down, your brain, your organs, yeah, everything yeah, about yeah. you. Yeah, every, all of it. We're not caricatures of something. We are, we are the feminine part of humanity. Men can have qualities that seem kind of a little bit more on the feminine side. I'd say they're more sensitive, but they don't, they don't, they're like, we're like ninjas compared to them. They can't do it. I just, I, I cannot express enough the power or magic in femininity. When you understand it, your ability to be a great influence on the people around you, your, especially your immediate family. If civilization is to be saved, it's going to be women who are the primary force behind it. There's no nation that can stand without homes. And the homes of any nation, in, in order for them to be solid and not crumble, Women are going to be the ones that hold it up because we're more sensitive to it. We notice when there's a problem quicker. We have the ability to, to do this. We are the more sensitive to the relationships. And that's why if, if it is saved, it's women. Because men will notice eventually, but sometimes it's too late. Well, what do you all think? What are your definitions of femininity? What do you think we left out of this list? We would love to hear from you in the comments. And thank you so much for sharing all of your valuable advice. It was nice chatting about this today. And we're here every week, so don't forget to check back with us. Subscribe and like our video. We really would appreciate your support so we can continue to make more videos. And we will see you next time. Bye. Yeah.